I used to absolutely hate fall time bass fishing. I despised it. And the biggest reason was that I used to read the magazines, watch the videos. I used to do what they said, go to the backs of the creeks, find the bait, and you will start loading the boat. And I can't tell you that that's just absolutely not true. And what I figured out is once I really started to simplify my fall time bass fishing, I really started to catch a lot more fish and I started to really love that fall time. And in today's video, I wanna give you five lures, kind of five different patterns as well that you can look for in the fall time to go out there and catch some bass. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by my fishing apparel company, Fin Fishing. At Fin Fishing, I have t-shirts, I have sun shirts, I have hats, I have gloves. I have a lot of the gear that us fishermen like to wear when we're out there on the water. Now, if you enjoy watching videos on this channel, one of the best ways to support it, one of the best ways to help me bring more videos like this to you is by shopping at Fin Fishing. So I'm gonna leave some links down below in the description. You can shop at Fin Fishing today. So before I get into the fall bass lures, I really wanna describe a few things that happen in the fall. I think it will help you to make better judgments when you're out there fishing. Now, the biggest thing that you're gonna see that really can hurt the fishing in the fall is the fall turnover. Oh no, God! If you don't know what the fall turnover is, I did a full video on this, but basically during the summer, your lakes will stratify, which basically means the water separates. You have an upper layer, a lower layer, and then in the middle, you have the thermocline. Now, basically the thermocline and above is where most of the oxygen is during the summer, which is why you have most of your fish around that thermocline and above. Now, during the fall, when the water temperatures start to fall, that water from the bottom layer will mix, it will flip, with the top layer and when it does that it kind of depletes a lot of oxygen it doesn't necessarily deplete oxygen but it spreads a lot of oxygen out in the water and also the fish go from being able to only be in that top layer to really being able to be anywhere in the water and so this is kind of a major thing that i'm going to talk to you a lot in this video about is that bass can really be anywhere in the fall i know you're taught go to the backs of the creeks. And you can definitely find some areas where you're gonna find big schools in the backs of creeks, but bass can be on the main lake. They can be in deep water, they can be in shallow water. There are very few patterns that I see happening in the fall. For the most part, for me, what I like to do is simply cover water. That is the biggest thing that you can do. Fish the backs of the creek, fish the points, fish on flats. If you see a dock, fish that dock. If you see a stump, fish that stump, fish a little bit of everything in the fall and just go out there and junk fish. That is truly what's going to help you catch a lot of fish. Now, one pattern that I absolutely do look for though in the fall is if your lake has grass in it. Like you see behind me over here, we have some grass mats. If you have a lot of vegetation in your lake, your pond or river, a lot of times what happens in the fall is that that vegetation that's below these mats is really going to start to die off. And you're going to have really good thick looking mats. And the first thing that I'm going to pick up, it's one of the best ways to catch some really big fish in the fall, is a punch rig. And I'm gonna start punching these mats. And the, the big thing that you will find when it comes to punching is that you will punch for a long time. This is the thing that kind of sucks. You have to fish a lot. You will cover a ton of water and then all of a sudden you will find these few little mats. Maybe it's a little point. Maybe it's a little inside edge of a mat and there will be a load of bass in a very small area. So if you hear guys saying, oh, you can, you can go out there and catch them punching mats, just keep that in mind because a lot of times it takes finding that right little mat that has a lot of fish. And sometimes there's no real rhyme or reason to it. But this is one pattern that I actually do look for when it comes to fall time fishing. I'm gonna use an ounce to ounce and a half weight, some sort of small crawl style or beaver style bait. I like a seven foot 11 inch heavy power rod. This is actually a kind of a moderate fast action rod with 50 pound straight fluorocarbon and a 7.3 to one gear ratio reel. Now let's get into what I primarily do in the fall because not every lake out there has a lot of vegetation in it. And this is when I'm gonna pick up these next three lures, which I find to be extremely 
important. And the first one that I'm going to pick up is a buzz bait. A buzz bait, I'm also going to interchange this a lot with a whopper plopper style bait. The buzz bait and the whopper plopper are my best friends in the fall. When that water temperature hits in, in the kind of the low 70s, upper 60s, all the way until that water temperature is in the 40s, I'm going to have a buzz bait or a whopper plopper tied up and on the front deck of my boat. And like I said, I am going to fish this everywhere. I'm going to go inside, outside, and I'm gonna fish it a little bit of everywhere, but usually I'm fishing it in less than five or six feet of water. I'm not gonna be out in the middle of the lake throwing a buzz bait, but unless there's five or six foot of water out there. But that's the thing, guys. I simply want to cover water. I'm really not gonna hit the same place twice, even in, the, in, a, in a day. And all I'm trying to do is pick off single fish. And the best thing about this bite, fish that you catch, tend to be big. They tend to be really, really big. So this is one of my best ways to go out there and catch some big fish. And it's it's really a lot of fun. But keep in mind, I'm going to keep hammering on this. Don't get sucked into a pattern because what happens is you'll be going and you catch one on a point and you're like, oh, I got to go run all the points. And that is typically what I do in bass fishing. But in the fall, it doesn't seem to apply as much. Yeah, you might go and catch more on points, but you might be missing a lot of other fish that are that are back in pockets or on flats. So keep that whopper plopper, keep that buzz bait with you and simply cover a lot of water. Now the next bait is another one I'm always going to have tied up no matter where I fish in the country and that is a square bill crankbait. This little bad boy is a workhorse during the fall and there's something that's really important about the color of this bait that we're going to talk about in just a minute but what I want to let you know is that I fish this little bait in a lot of the same areas that I throw that buzz bait. Now the biggest difference with this bait is I do like it to be hitting on the cover. I like to have it hit on the dock piling, hit on the wood or the lay down, hit up against uh, a rock. So anytime I can get this bait to hit on the bottom and I'm not gonna get snagged up on stuff that's on the bottom, that's why I'm gonna pick up this square bill. And there are days where the bass aren't absolutely loving that buzz bait or that plopper. And those are the days that I pick up this square bill. And again, I'm going to fish it everywhere. Now, one thing that is a little bit different I really like to throw this bait in, in those, those muddier water or really heavily stained bodies of water. I, I'm not saying you can't get bit with the buzz bait in those areas because you absolutely can. But if I have pretty dirty water, more times than not, the, the square bill is go, going to be what I pick up first. Now, with that being said, I just told you that I wanted to talk a little bit about color. I think what a lot of guys do is they will pick a shad colored crankbait during the fall. And I'm not saying that you're not gonna catch bass on that, but here's the thing. In that late fall or that early, late summer, early fall times period, you have billions of little bait fish out there in the water. And you have a ton of young of the year gizzard shad, threadfin shad, little bluegill, and they're all kind of that silverish, whitish color. So what I think sometimes can help you to actually catch more fish is kind of to mismatch the hatch. I want a bait that stands out a little bit. If I have a crankbait that is the exact same size and the exact same color of all those shad that those bass see, I think that during this time of the year, you're not... You, it, I just feel like you will catch more if that bait kind of stands out. It's hard for me to kind of say this, obviously, as I'm stuttering over my words, but I think that having something that's chartreuse and blueback, chartreuse and blackback, even when you're fishing in a little bit clear water, I have found that to be a little bit of a key during this time of the year because it just kind of helps that bait to stand out. And I know it kind of goes against the grain, but I truly believe that. So pick you up a chartreuse crankbait, a square bill in particularly, and just go cover a lot of water with it. Now, bait number four is actually one that I keep on the front deck of my boat the entire year. But in the fall, it catches some of the biggest bass that I will catch all year long, and that is a jig. Now, this is one of my favorite jigs of all time. This is a Strike King structure jig, and it's to me, it's, it's a jig. You can swim it, you can flip it in heavy cover, you can fish it down a, a steep bank, you can fish it out there on structure. This is one of my favorite little jigs that I throw. Now, 
I have a very specific pattern. This is probably one of the only patterns that I really look for in the fall, and that is by fishing creek channel swing banks with a jig. This is something that tends to happen in really late fall. For me, where I live, you know, this is gonna be when that water temperature is probably about 55 degrees to 45 degrees. As it is falling, those fish really relate to those those creek channel banks, especially the ones that have a little bit of a swing to them, and especially the ones that come up and hit a point. If you have a little bluff point, a little creek channel swing point, those can be really, really key areas where I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast this bait up into shallow water, and I'm just going to stair step it, just kind of hop it and bounce it down that deep, deep bank. Now the real big key with this is Make sure you fish this bait all the way out. Cause what I've seen sometimes when I've had guys in my boat with me, they'll cast up to the bank, they'll work it down five or six feet, they'll reel it back and they keep doing the, the same thing. What I found is that there are days where those bass will position really deeper on those creek channel swing banks. There might be a stump or a brush pile that is in 18, 19, 20 foot of water, and that's where the fish are. They kind of will pick a layer of the water to be in, and that's what they will be in during that day. And once you kind of figure out that depth zone, that layer that they are sitting in, you can really concentrate in that area. But I always like to cast to the bank and drag it, hop it slowly out towards me. Now, bait number five is to me, one of the best baits to catch a lot of fish and really big ones in the fall, and that is a spinner bait. A spinner bait like this one right here is one of my absolute favorite ways to catch big fish. You can fish it anywhere. You know, that's the big thing with this bait. I'm going to fish it anywhere, but I actually did a full video about fall time spinner bait fishing that I'm going to link right here. So if you guys want to learn more about the spinner bait and where to fish it and how to fish it in the fall, click on this video. Also, don't forget to pick you up some fin gear on this link right here. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.